Welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. Last episode, we were punished for cheating. What's this? Neat office shades, minus one drama, plus one viz calc. I'll take it. I need less drama in my life anyways. Oh yes. Wow, look at us. We look amazing. Let's give it a shot. The file cabinet stands steady as ever, and the unlocked drawer slides out to greet you. Force yourself to go through the folders. Look how blurry all the lines on these papers are. How unwieldy your own willpower is to yourself. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you as you pick up the handset. Your fingers run over the dial pad. 005. That's the dialing code for Revachol. 4952. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. 993. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Revachol. 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy, how may I help you? Damn, this chair is uncomfortable. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair I in the world. I fucking knew it. It's violating your backside. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Shit. <laughs> uh, composure. I took the check. I didn't say thanks for it, and the chair is killing me. Fuck you. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun, and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. Fuck. <laughs> Have another look at the folder. Read shipping folders from before. Bark. Everard's large hands are covering the folder, but the look on his face says, I know everything about you, Harry. But at least we are out of that office and out of that chair. We're going to see if we can push forward without the help of Everard. Um, I'm going to do my best to lean into my, uh, <laughs> my instinct. A little more cuz uh, yeah I mean <clears throat> I thought it'd be good to listen to Kitsuragi not sit in the chair but I gotta do me anyway not sure what uh, stuff to do now oh He's okay. Time to go back. It is what? 2.48 in the afternoon. Might be good to check in on everybody we've talked to. But um uh, I don't know. Maybe let's sell our bottles first. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says one bottle equals 10 cents. Insert my bottles. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Let's see. Right, so we're running low on Nazafed. Hmm. Can we purchase some? Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. I need to exchange this novelty check for cash. Uh, wow. I didn't know you worked for the union, sir. 
anything else I can do for you? No, you don't work for the Union. The Union works for you by supplying you with cash. That was easy. Worryingly, sir. <laughs> Leave. By the way, I uh, talked to Everard, Claire. You have? And how did you like Mr. Claire? Finally. Time to choose sides. Mm. <clears throat> I didn't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually, corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm-like, corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. <laughs> I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. Of course, Detective. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Can we ask her for some money? <gasps> uh. Hmm. Let's give it a shot. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Why? It's a war. Why must we stop to look at this war app? Sorry. We are still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. Rene, I found your guard booth. Yes. The Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. Hmm. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern, and I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. So, who was working your shift that night? No one. The booth has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officers. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly... decorative? The possibility... Or someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Evra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabinier's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. Hmm. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong with their collecting. It's my side thing too. Oh, I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard boost now? Got it, thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, 
like I said, it would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Sure. Let's, um... Uh, let's hit the pawn shop. What a shirt. All other shirts pale in comparison to the muscular man with antlers and immense zweihanders. How much are you selling this shirt for? Two real. That's dirt cheap. Uh, couldn't you just give it to, to me for free then? But why? Uh, because I'm a broke cop without a cent to my name. I sympathize, I do. But this is a for-profit enterprise. <laughs> okay, I've thought it over. And I want to buy the t-shirt. Wait. Minus two authority. <laughs> Better to have options, I guess. Welcome to Hjelmdahl, officer. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets. Toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Everything you pick out Are you seems kidding me? faded, chipped, and sad somehow. Oh man, come on. Come on. The boomboxes wait on the shelves. And your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. What I really want to know is, could this device come in handy in my police work? If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. Shopkeep, this stereo is approved machine here. Is the Harman Welshie W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel-to-reel -reel format. 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back 12 real. Are you sure this is all in working order? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings <clears throat> of speech. Found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though I don't really like music. Awful. Just awful. That's odd. Why doesn't he like music? Don't like music? What well, do you like then? The stuff I record myself. Silverware shaking in drawers as motor cars race by. Nocturnal animals climbing on the roof. Airship rotors. That kind of thing. Hmm. Maybe you should ditch music as well. Get into these more experimental sounds he's describing. <laughs> Sampling. I want to buy that boombox. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything. Wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. And at last, do we have anything to sell to him? Hello again. How can I help you? The boombox I bought. It should play this tape, right? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. It all starts with the tape. I wanted to ask about my uh, missing gun again. Sure thing. Have people from Everard Clare's Union come here to track that gun? Maybe. Shady looking guys came in here yesterday. Looking like they'd just taken off their Wild Pines overalls. They asked if I have a police weapon to sell. I told them I already sold it. They went their way. It was a trip. But you know, all sorts of people come here asking for all sorts of things. Wait, then it might be true. Everard's claims. Maybe Claire really is tracking down your gun. Hmm. People as oleaginous as Everard seem like they're lying even when they're really being truthful. Thanks for the review. Let's talk about something else. Sure, man. Uh, there is something I'd like to sell. Sure. Let me have a look. I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Photo of a happy couple. 
a black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a ferris wheel. The girl is young and pretty, the man clad in fancy uniform and smiling. On the back, a very steady hand has written the words, La Vachelle Fair, Summer of 91. Oh, do I really want to get rid of, uh, Jardin? Bon, clothes. Uh, <laughs> should I sell my clothes? I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. Another time, perhaps. Yes, okay. Let's check the journal. Armor gloves. René. I need a map. Let's get out of here. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? Mm. <laughs> Should we do this now or later? I'm not sure. It's you again. What is it? I talked to Joyce, the merc you hanged. His friends are coming for you. Yeah. My friends. You mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want to beat up his grandma. Um. Yes. Forget I mentioned it. It was probably nothing. Goddamn right. It's, it's probably more like two or three thousand. But whatever keeps their spirits up. <coughs> Fuck does Kuno okay? care? Hmm. I have more questions about the crime scene. Yeah? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? The ladder. Ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! Would you say that the ladder is unclimbable? Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. I talked to Manana about the armor. So? Hmm. He told me you promised to sick the pigs on him. He said to thank you. Wasn't too keen on chasing down that armor anyways. Uh, fuck, okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello! Look, pig, Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you, that happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. <laughs> I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're gonna remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief in the Kuno. After this shit. You better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material Etonite. <clears throat> what is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented Etonite in the Vartner Polytechnic Institute some 30 odd years ago, he thought it would last forever. Hence the name, Etonite. Sadly, the only lasting thing turned out to be the material's highly carcinogenic effect. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because it's nice and orderly. Oh my god, I'm... <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. Perception. Alright. Last task for the day. Let's speak to Annette. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Suggestion. <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> Let's go. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. I pull the curtains open. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. <laughs> Let's save. Open this up. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. A vaguely andro androgynous portrait of a man. Looks like Guillaume Le Million, that hair poster. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Unlock the door with a key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Open the door and enter. Speak to Kim. What is this place? Mm. Looks like a gym to me. Artemiteps boxing club for young athletes. I think you're right. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. <laughs> Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. Sounds good. Alright. Mini adventure. Wait. Whoa. Um, <laughs> equip this to play tapes. Weird. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. The poster says, Sidious Fortis, the rest is worn off. I will take this pool. We can give it to, um, Rene. Worn out wall bars, they look unsafe. Smells like leather and sweat. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. Hmm. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. <laughs> this shit's goofy. At least if we're gonna fail our stat checks, we might as well be goofy. Up the stairs. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Looks like the remains of a 24th window repair shop. We go inside. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted.
Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. Money. Blue velvet, soft to the touch. Moth bitten. More money. Is this Emma's atelier? What's this? Production schedule, filament memory, $10. The cube-like crisscross of filaments feel oddly fragile in your hand. Its intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads, Production Schedule. Note, this filament contains info that can be read using a radio computer. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Looks like someone tried to... Reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, <laughs> is which did they start with and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. <sighs> That's just speculation. We don't know anything for sure. Not quite. You do know that there's something unusual about this company's business model. Yes? Ah, come on. But where are the clothes it used to display? <coughs> Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, <coughs> and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. You should adopt one of those welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, <laughs> but a welkin. Stupid drama. One of the welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. This is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin. His face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tuorg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Mm. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm-hmm political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. <laughs> Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they... real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. 
You see permafrost and glacial landforms. The entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Nope. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. No. Oh, that sounds interesting, actually. <laughs> Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Minimi stands for a mini meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Keep reading. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, Heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, The biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. <laughs> um, hmm. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? This is the Ream Civic radio computer, model RC5120. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Turn on the machine. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Press play. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Press print. Nothing happens. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play again. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Insulindian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Hmm. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. 
Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. A password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that. Now, can you please repeat the password? Is it my birthday? Still no. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other info about this company? One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's not bad. Wow. So conceptual. Hmm. And what's that? This interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? What are you? A machine? Or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Hello, Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Hmm. <laughs> okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insel Indian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Now, Please tell me if there is anything else I can do for this accident. That's all for now. Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Let's review this board. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. Hold on. How do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies? For what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. <laughs> so we're dealing with something medical here? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Ilmara. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. <laughs> Hmm, the cost of air width alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. 
And what else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Ooh, we talked to Kim. Scribbled across a notebook. Devs of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? <laughs> Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. No, that's not it. I think... Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. How were they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master Frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West. Among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was an RPG. Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Roleplaying people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good <laughs> to be left unfinished. Where are the investors? Where is the crowdfunding? What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... Hmm. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Okay, let's keep moving. Save. Through. <laughs> Money. Magnesium. Oh, what's this? Oh boy. I'm just checking if a thought bubble comes up, like this one. The winds howl in from the coal chute above. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? Mm. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? You should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. Mm -mm. <laughs> Physical instrument called Slipstream SCA again. Leave. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. 
The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Look inside the fridge. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. So they try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Nope. An ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. A flashlight. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Look, there's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim? Are these any good? Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean? A rifle? Here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. And? Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Hmm. frozen ice cream maker that's still running money now's a fed quick save two cables are plugged into the breaker box the red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby hmm well we might need a fridge Ice cream maker. Should we unplug? Leave. Wait. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Um. <laughs> I don't know why I unplugged it. I just do things without any reason. The lieutenant raises his brows but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board 
Now has one cable missing. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Oh, new shirt. Insane mesh tank top. Upstairs. the door. Oh, okay. Let's interact with a handwritten note from the fridge. It still bears some marks from the fruit-shaped kitchen magnets that were used to the secure it to the fridge door. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen <coughs> ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. I wonder who wrote that now. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Hmm. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. And remind me again, what's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. And who's the illiterate ginger kid? Really? You don't have a single guess? Oh, you mean Kuno. Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Didn't you see one right next to the breaker box? Okay. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it, slowly melting. Try to crack open the lid. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. No, this is going to need something else. Some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Try the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. I suppose this is the last thing to do today. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Pry bar is not strong enough. 3% machine unplugged and better grip with gloves. Okay, leave. Let's put the pry bar away for now. Let's see if we can go upstairs. Downstairs? A cellar window, people's feet shuffling by on the street. Hmm. Can I go upstairs from here?
Is there a door upstairs? An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. This is directly above the central furnace in the cellar. The voices probably came from here. We'll leave for now. Hmm. Postcard, La Delta, 51. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist. <coughs> Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. The floorboards creak. Let's uh, save. As before, an iron safety curtain curved. This is directly. Can we open it with a pry bar in our hand? As before, this is directly above the nope. silk. As before, this is direct. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Knock on it harder. Still nothing. No one's home. Knock even harder. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. There must be another way to wake up whoever is in there. Ow. <laughs> Down the stairs. the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Yell hello into the furnace. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? Hello, are you there? Speak to me. Stairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Right, okay. Smear your hands with coal. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. Still, it's good to have this dirt on you. Real men wear coal for makeup. <laughs> I wonder if that boosts my um, grip on the uh, the thing. This orange machine is dead. Nah. Okay, up the stairs, here we go. Save. We could turn the light off now. This tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. 
we can use a flashlight. Nope. Hello. Hello. I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. So what kind of dye are you looking for? She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Hold on. What do you mean by milieu? Yes, a milieu is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Hmm. Maybe. I'm not really sure why I'm here. Oh. I'm not interested in buying dice right now. I'm a police officer, and I need to ask some questions. Of course, I can see that. I just thought you were a police officer looking for dice. How else can I help you then? No falsehoods are present. She's a novelty dice maker and doesn't have anything to hide. Ask what you need. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first. But that's an unfocused field, with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked <coughs> me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like RPGs yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. Maybe I'll make this an extra long episode. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. Hmm. <clears throat> Hey, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of black, coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Create here. The lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into shadows above. When she arrived here, there was no room anywhere else. She must have known the other businesses. Hmm. Do you know what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. Okay, we get it, you're a man. <laughs> a bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. Agreeable. It's not about the haircut, it's about the confidence. Hmm. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customers would have been more open-minded. Should have been more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. What happened to the gym? 
It wasn't merely a gym, it was Art the Meetup's boxing club. A community project created to steer at risk use away from drugs and crime. And who is Artemidum? A kind man from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. Well, maybe that's what Kuno needs a community centered, centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? Hmm. <laughs> Indeed, who is Kuno? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> He's a little gen uh, ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. And how did the boxing club project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. Hmm. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Anything else? What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milius. Who would have guessed? Hmm, what's the snuff milia? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Well, I know what snuff is, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Cool, very cool about the debris. But what's a snuff milieu? It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. Nothing changes in her tone as she says that, as if it's just another piece of information to lay out for the world. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed Sub Roses. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights? <laughs> Side note, Atelier and um, Zaum, Zaum actually did a collaboration and um, they sold very, very rare and exclusive um, bomber jackets just like the one that Kim is wearing right now. Uh, there are only 15 out in the world, and they each cost about $500, and I want one. <laughs> Insect rights activists. What in the name of... Wait, this could have something to do with Lena, the cryptozoologist, and her husband's disappearance. Mm-hmm. The Atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. Oh yes. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys. I like insects. Hmm, really? Anyway. What's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. This lady reminds me of this one 
female character in a movie called Bridge to Terabithia, very fairy-like, sprightly. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Her smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just the props. Why return them? Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. But not a sword, just wielding it as a weapon. A polearm, even. There was a terrifying taxidermic bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Reva show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian, ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Okay. Indeed. What were the other ideas? All right. What about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Fritz does the same thing. <laughs> I know a girl like that. She works in Fritz as a cashier and she's not particularly friendly. Employing silky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. Oh, just like the 80s. And they already had the bear. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 saw caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Maybe, because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't doing his best, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Oh, I like that. Sounds cool. Megatherian. Megatherian. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. <laughs> I don't do drugs. Very good. You shouldn't do them. You're a police officer after all. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad, finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes follow it idly. Little sparkling embers under the window. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her then. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. 
I saw the name of East Delta Pinball on the doorbell. Right, it used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure, before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, choreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. Uh, excuse me, Kim. <laughs> excuse me, Kim. I was wondering about the whirling and rags. Is it part of the same building complex? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Dune commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. A strange thing happened when I tried calling a company called Slistream, SCA. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream SEA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Playsons from the bookstore. She said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? There's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? It was too real to be just a prank. Either we're dealing with a professional actress. Whatever happened, keep your cool. It's probably better to admit that it was a harmless prank. It may have been some sort of rare electrical anomaly. A prank is more likely, no? Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious things. The mind is the drawing board of history. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind the curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. From what I've seen, so far, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. That's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. She tosses a pair of dice on the table. One of them stops near the edge of the metallic desk. The result is one on a 20-sided die. Anything else? Mm. I'm pretty sure it's sure. I'm listening. Actually, I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by daily ruckus? Well. There's always something going on in the Whirling's backyard. 
during daytime there are usually those kids and lately I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about must be because of the strike she's heard of the murder but did not see it sire but I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night I'm afraid and you never took your eyes off the work to look out of the window I might have but in this case all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's light here, but dark in the yard at night. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? I've heard this place is cursed. Do you... Did you know that people call it the Doom commercial area? I've heard the stories. But I don't think those stories are true. Wait, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Agreeable. Well, Plaisance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Hmm. Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. Oh, right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. No, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off and customers have trouble paying bills. And then there is me. <sighs> she looks, she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered, from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Strange indeed. Maybe it's just because she's so talented that she's been able to woo the curse. Hmm. <laughs> Do... I'll be the first to admit there are many inconsistencies in this so-called curse. I was just about to ask. What do you think? Do you think the curse is real? Could be her. <laughs> Honestly, I'm still not sure. The world is a puzzling place. Is it now? I've always thought it's a rather mundane and boring place with no supernatural surprises inside. Well... If you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, let me know. That's all she has to say on the subject. She's been thorough and truthful, as far as we can see. Where the second shivers? <laughs> I'm a little scared. I'm listening. Fortress accident. There were an need. Let's understand. They certainly took the, the usual. Well, they see she clicked it accidentally. She says yes, but in the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have, not the wisest, the result. anything else. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. Shivers. Let's go for it. Leave. Clothes. Wasn't there a Shivers... Piece of Shivers clothing? Okay. Boom. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Let's see if we see if we can punch up our shivers. Oh, 
I am oh so curious. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a dye? I'd like to order a dye from you. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. I'm looking for something to help me with my work. I think I have just the right one for you. She opens the top drawer of her work desk and takes something out. Two polyhedrons, red and blue, are cradled in her palm. Um, I don't get it. You're a police officer, right? Here, catch. They're a gift from me. A beautiful woman tossing you a gift. Whatever you do, don't overthink it. Totally overthinking it? Oh no! <laughs> Here, catch. They're a gift from me. 58. Wait, have mercy. You overthink it. Your hands can't agree what to do and the two dice drop to the floor and scatter in opposite directions. Like pearls from a broken string. The blue one disappears down the pit in the center of the room. I... Ah, down the drain, like your career. I apologize, officer. That comment was unnecessary. Pick up the red dye. That one is made of bloodstone with a lapis lazuli inlay. The other one was the inverse. There were a set, you see, but now the set is broken. It's a shame. They might have brought you luck. You definitely need luck in Martinez. Now, was there anything else? <laughs> yeah. White check. Shivers. 20%? You feel nothing. If anything, it's uncomfortably warm in here. <laughs> Leave it she at that. She has begun to idly clean one. Well, that was spooky. Last thing, I'm gonna go down into the furnace to see if we can get it. Oh, it's dark. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Kick it with your foot. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Your toe hurts. Oh my god. Well, this is the most unluckiest of uh, playthroughs. Really. <laughs> but at least I have one die. 20-sided die is made of bloodstone and inlaid with lapis lazuli, its color resembling police sirens. Its blue partner is missing. Kinda looks like the fire department arriving on the scene. Got fucked, shit fingers. No, look at the map tab and journal to see which white checks have opened. Yeah, I need a save. Um... Our luck has... Still been pretty bad. Um, but we did find the gun. And the ball. And the lady. So, it wasn't that bad. But with that, I'll see you in the next episode.